Oh, <laughs> all right, guys and girls, lads and lasses, chipmunks and chihuahuas, and everyone in between. I hope you're all good. Now, you can probably tell I'm a little bit excited about this video because I'm about to show you an amazing effect directly in After Effects that is super quick, super easy, but it's so effective. So quick and easy, in fact, that I'm going to limit myself to five minutes. Yeah, not 15, five minutes, because I know you're all busy people and you want to crack on. So, without further ado, shut up, Sam, and let's get going. <laughs> Right, so we've got After Effects open. First thing we need to do is import our assets. So what you're going to need for this is a logo. I'm going to use the YouTube logo because, well, we're on YouTube and some form of music, any kind of music, any audio you want, just drag that in there. And the first thing is to create a composition. So right click, new composition. I'm just going to keep this in HD, 25 frames per second. And let's change this to about 30 seconds because it could be a real. Give it a name, whatever you want, waveform effect. I'll do. White background, doesn't really matter. Let's crack on. Drag your logo into the composition. And then we grab our music, drag that underneath. All right, so with the logo selected, you want to go to layer, auto trace. You've got a few settings here, but I'm just essentially going to keep it as the default settings. But if you find that it's not quite worked for you, just come back, repeat this and maybe change a few of these. So we're going to hit OK. So it's important that your PNG file is like a transparent logo. So it doesn't have a background. So your logo itself is the object. That way it can trace around that image. Otherwise, if it's got like a white background and stuff like that, it's just going to do a square. Not really going to work. So yeah, make sure you've got a transparent background on your PNGs. So as you can see, we've got these two masks identified by the two different colors. So if we expand this down here, you'll see the masks. We've got mask one and mask two. And one thing you might notice is that it's not quite perfect in these sort of areas up here, over here here and over here so we can just zoom in and clean up those little bits I'll speed this bit up a little bit Now I'm pretty happy with that, that's pretty simple. As I said before, it's a really easy logo. Yours might be a little bit more complex, so you might want to take a little bit more care adjusting those masks. So with that done, what you want to do is select the section of the music that you want the effect to start playing from. So I'm just going to expand this here so I can see the wavelengths because I think that mine doesn't start for a few seconds. So I'm just going to drag that over to the beginning. So the next thing to do is select your logo, go to effect, generate, and it's audio spectrum that we're wanting to play with today. As you can see, we've got all these parameters of over here to play with. So the first one you want to change is the audio layer. This is basically the source of the audio. So obviously we want to choose our track. Then we want to choose the mask that we want the effect to overlay, which is mask one in this case. So if we just disable the logo for the time being so that we're just concentrating on this mask layer and then we can press play and see what effect it's having at the moment. <laughs> So as you can see, it's already pretty cool. As the music plays, these waveforms bounce up and down like some sort of audio equalizer thing, waveform thing. Pretty cool, but we can make it better. So what I like to do first is increase the frequency bands, which is basically just going to increase the number of lines in the effect so that I can still see the dividing lines, something like I think 750 from memory, that'll do. Next, we want to change the maximum height. So this is gonna expand how far these waveforms go. So I want it quite exaggerated. So something like 3000 will do for now. Now you can change the thickness of the lines depending on what look you're after, but I quite like the way it was. So I'm gonna keep it at three. As you can see, we've got these two colors here. We've got an inside color and an outside color. If we change that to something a little bit more exaggerated, like a blue, for example. Now you can see that the inside is blue and then the outside is this magenta color. Now I'm just gonna temporarily turn back on the original logo layer because what I want to do is pick the red from the logo for both the inside and the outside. Because essentially what I wanna create is like the logo is just exploding with audio wave bands. So like this explosion of audio, so that's essentially what I'm wanting to create. So I don't wanna change the colors. So if we just play that back, it looks like the logo's exploding with audio. Job done. So you also want to check the blend overlapping colors because that's just going to make these areas in the corners and where these lines may overlap a little bit neater. It's just going to blend the colors together. A really cool little feature here is this hue interpolation. I can never say that word. I can never say that word. Interpolation. Is that right? I think it's right. It's hue interpolation. So if we just turn that around, what you'll see here, look how it changes color. So it goes through all this like kaleidoscope of colors. Now you can play about with a stopwatch here and create keyframes. So if you wanted to during the duration of your animation, you can actually make it blend in with different colors, which is pretty cool. But for this, I'm just gonna put that back to zero. 
If we just disable this logo layer again, so we can actually see what's going on, Sam, I should have done that earlier. If we just press play, we can see where we are at the moment. So far, so good. So we have this drop down menu here, which says digital, but I'll show you what the other two options are because obviously it's quite handy to know what you can do. Analog lines. This is very, very similar, but I'll just play that back so you know what it does. So rather than individual lines, I think they're all connected together like a zigzag. And then if we check the analog dots, you'll see that it's also very similar, but just with dots. But for this, we're going to put it back to digital. We have another drop down menu, which is side A and side B. And as you can see here, you can see that the wavelengths are going on this side of the line and also on the outside of the line. I don't want it to go inside because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my original logo visible for the effect. So here we're just going to change this to side B. Yeah, got it right. It's a 50 50 chance. Now, one thing you might have noticed, which I find pretty annoying is you can see that the wavelengths stop on the perimeter or the border of the boundary. Yeah, the boundary, let's go with boundary. The boundary of the PNG file. So as it goes to that boundary, it just cuts off and it looks like they've all been snipped off, which obviously isn't the effect we're after. So I'll show you how to fix it now. It's pretty simple. You just go to your mask here and just hit invert. Boom, we're done. Not quite done, we're not quite done. Now I'm just gonna change this maximum height here because I think it's a bit too much for my liking. Put it back down to about 2000. Now there is one more thing to do and that is turn the logo back on. So now if we press play, How good does that look? Now, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I think that looks pretty damn good myself. Now, as I said before, you can play about with these settings. It depends on your logo as well. Like your logo might have angles and curves and sharp edges or whatever. So you're going to want to play about with how long these lines are going to go, how thick they are, whatever colors you want to play with. It's very, very simple as you can see. Now, there is one more thing. I think I said there was one more thing before, but there's one more thing I want to do to just make this a little bit better. So the first thing we're going to do is have our mask layer selected. Command and D to duplicate it. Then we're going to go into the effects control panel and for the mask path, we're going to choose mask two this time and do the opposite and put it on side A. Boom. And if we play that back, Come on, how good is that? Now I think I deserve a pat on the back and a beer, but if you can't get me either of those, then if you wouldn't mind giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, hitting the bell, all those nice things, and I shall see you in the next one. Go on, see, it's a good video, it's a good video. Did I make five minutes, by the way?